Guru is with MSI Components at CES 2025. We saw the notebook people yesterday, but this yesterday was a wasteland because NVIDIA had not yet announced their new graphics. And that's what this section of the booth is all about. But there's a lot of other stuff. So here we have Supreme Liquid and 50 Series. But I don't actually see the liquid card. Oh, there's the liquid card down the end on the left. So let us shimmy down there. And it, if you just move to the left a bit, Matt. There we go. Just take the space. That's it. Good, man. RTX 5090 32 gigabyte Supreme Liquid OC. In other words, a graphics card with a 360 liquid cooler on it. And we move to the right and we have the 5090 Supreme OC non-liquid. In other words, this is a conventional, very large air-cooled graphics card. Next to that, the Vanguard OC. Now, to my eyes, there's not a lot of difference, but it's something like one fewer heat pipes in the cooler. Moving down the line further, we have the Trio OC, which is very similar to the Vanguard. But this is the way that MSI gets five models out of each graphics chip. And then down the end of the line, we have the much more slinky Ventus 3X OC. And here we have the Supreme Liquid OC stripped down. So we have the chunky great copper cold plate. And here we have the updated pump from the previous version. You can also see the lengthy tubes going off to the liquid cooler, which is a 360, 3 by 120 And here we have the stripped down cooler for the 32 gigabyte Supreme OC non-liquid. So there's the fan carrier with the 3 on 20s and a bunch of wiring for fan control, but there's no RGB in that part. It is instead on this edge of the graphics card. And here we have the cooler, which looks to my eyes actually very similar to a 4090 cooler, i.e. big, but it's doing more work with this generation. And when you go to the end, you get a good view of those various heat pipes which are doing all the work or a large part of the work. We see the Vanguard OC, and you can see the Vanguard OC cooler very similar to the Supreme cooler. So we have 5090s, and we're going to go down the line at a tear. Ventus 3X OC, Gaming Trio OC, Vanguard OC, Supreme OC, Supreme Liquid OC. We move around from 5090, and we have 5080, 16 gigabyte Inspire 3X OC, 16 gigabyte Ventus 3X OC, which is only very slightly more gamery. The Gaming Trio OC in white and the regular Gaming Trio OC in black. The Vanguard OC, the Supreme OC, this is the 5080, remember, and also the 5080 Supreme Liquid OC. So you can have liquid in either 5090 or 5080. Matt is now going to come to the end of a row and he's going to look down a line of all the same models but 5070 Ti because this place is a madhouse. And we come around here and we look down that row there. Just look down the row and the same models again but 5070s. However, there is one point of difference. The 12 gigabyte Ventus 2X OC in white, i.e. two fans, not three, and the Ventus 2X OC in silver and black. These are not yet denoted as being small form factor compatible, but my guess is they are, and in time they will certainly get the official designation. And we come down the line and we see all the other familiar models. It's AI time naturally, and we go to the left and the AI chatbot demo built with NVIDIA Ace, we saw it yesterday, and an AI system. Now, it so happens this case is interesting. It's down the front of the booth and it won an award. Uh, the significant feature being is this touch panel on the front. Matt touches the Windows key. Just another monitor, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But I thought it was also um, had some software running behind yeah. it. Um, however, the significant thing with this is demo build with AI software. And it so happens the graphics card inside is an MSI RTX 5090, which looks absolutely colossal. A selection of controllers, Force Pro wireless controller, and then some mice. The Versa 500 wireless is right-handed. The Versa 501 is ambidextrous. The Versa 300 claims 200 hours of gaming on a single charge. I would like to see Matt prove that. That's going to be a fun week or three for him. And then the Versa 300 wireless. Next to that, the Maestro 300 headset. The Meg Maestro 900PZ series mod. System 2 
and System 1, because this has two PCs in it, and the cards are slightly confusing. If we look over to the right-hand side, this card applies. It's the MPG Z890i HTI Wi-Fi, i.e. Mini ITX Intel, single graphics card, which we're told is an RTX 4070 Ventus 3X. When we go to the left-hand system, this is where things get a bit weird. The motherboard is a Meg Z890 Ace. That's not peculiar. The processor, Core Ultra 9 285K, but according to this card, the graphics card, we have one RTX 1490 Supreme X 24G and one RTX 4070 Ti Supreme X. In other words, two graphics cards, both Supreme, but apparently not identical. To my eyes, they look identical, so I'm not sure what's going on there. The power connections are different, so no doubt they are actually different graphics cards. Who the heck mates a 4090 with a 4070 Ti? That is peculiar. Tour down the line, Mag B860M motor Wi-Fi with the new Intel B860M chipset, Meg Z890 Ace, we know all about that, Meg Z890 Godlike, we don't want to review this because it costs an absolute fortune, uh, north of a thousand, I think it might even be 1500 pounds, Mag B860 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, that's a motherboard for the people and we like these sorts of products. The new Tomahawks are good. Meg PC build and suddenly everything becomes obvious. Yes, it's godlike. That explains everything. And at the moment, an RTX 4080 graphics card. 4080 plural, of course, two of them. Mag X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi, familiar with that. Carbon Wi-Fi, also familiar. B850, new chipset. Haven't yet played with this. Looking forward to trying this. Budget chipset on Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. And finally, MPG B850 Edge Ti Wi-Fi. We like cheaper motherboards, provided they perform. And we have the Meg X870E Godlike. Godlikes are always expensive. I've just been told this is priced at 1099 which is obviously very painful, but it's not 1500 I like it. I obviously wouldn't consider buying it, but it does look incredibly smart. Next to the Godlike, we have the Meg AI 1600T PCIe 5 power supply. 1600 watts, ATX 3.1. PCIe 5.1. Goodness me, that looks the part. I mean, a power supply that looks good is a thing to behold. MPG Core Liquid P13 360 Liquid Cooler. Looks like it's got a clock on the pump housing. That's interesting. 360 AIO, obviously. What on earth is JAF2 compatible? Huh, okay, that's new to me. Uh, and this comes with a kit that allows you to offset your Intel cooler to put the cooler directly over the hotspot of your new processor. Interesting stuff. And then to the right, the Magcore Liquid A15360. That is a variant on a cooler we've been using uh, for testing. Uh, impressive piece of hardware. The world's first 27-inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor. I think Asus might possibly have something to say about that, because I think they've made a very similar claim. What Azus doesn't, well, as Ashe Azus does have daft model codes, and this too is daft. MPG 272 URX QD OLED is nuts. The spec of this monitor looks absolutely amazing. I would love to know the price of it, however, because that is going to be a very significant point. 27 inch 4K hugely fast refresh. That is a sector of the market that's of keen interest. We've seen 32s. This is a 27. So this is a dual mode mini LED monitor. So 27 inches, the crazy model code is MPG274URDFWE16M, which is mad. It is 4K 160 or Full HD 320. I love the idea it can be two things at once. The MAG272URDF, so 27 inch, 4K at 160 or Full HD at 320. Okay, this is it. MSI's first 24 inch 600 Hertz TN monitor. So it's TN technology, but wickedly fast. The MPG 242RX60N. 600 Hertz. What more do you need to know? If that's what you're after, have some. Project Zero X, the cleanest of clean builds. I love all this backside power connection hiding the cables away. It looks just as smart as smart can be. And if we go to the right, we have another Project Zero build with Lucky the Dragon on a little turntable. The fact it's white, I think, helps as well. But of course, you do also get Project Zero products in black. But clean is good. 
I mentioned that that 27 inch that's 4K and 240 uh, is a new product, but this MPG 322 Eurex QD OLED is a 32 inch 4K uh, 240 hertz. Uh, QD OLED. In other words, the significant thing with the 27 inch is that technology in a 27 inch form factor monitor. 32 inches we've already seen in that, su in that spec. Uh, it's the new size that's significant. 27 inches, much more convenient than 32 in my book. A quick rundown a row of gaming desktops. The Vision ZS gaming desktop runs Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, RTX 4090 graphics, looks smart. Then we have the Vision RS AI in white. It would be AI, wouldn't it? This is Intel Core Ultra 7 and it's RTX 4080. You'll note only a two-fan cooler. The Aegis RS2 AI gaming desktop. Again, Intel Core Ultra 9 and RTX 4090, but that's a big boy rather than the much smaller graphics card to its left. And finally, a Codex Z2 DAI. This is a PC I'm not familiar with, but when you look at the spec, you can understand why. Ryzen 7 8700F and RTX 4060 Ti. In other words, fairly entry level. And we're closing off this hectic booth tour in front of the CES 2025 Innovation Awards that have been won by MSI. Come down over here, Matt, and have a look. So we saw the Claw 8 AI Plus yesterday. That's running the latest Intel processor. Uh, Matt has reviewed the uh, Meteor Lake version. This is the new Lunar Lake. We go to the right. We have the Meg Z890 Unify X motherboard. Interestingly, I have one of these back at base. However, it's not apparently on sale in the UK or indeed in Europe. Next to that, the MPG Z890i Edge Ti Wi-Fi, in other words, Mini ITX. Looks very smart. Active cooling on the VRMs and an Aegis RS2 AI gaming desktop, a PC running a Core Ultra 9 285K with RTX 4090. We come around, I think we can be confident that's due for a 50 series upgrade quite soon. And the Megvision X AI second, I'm sure the second, if you go around the front mat, refers to an updated front screen, which has extra functionality. This case looks really nifty and the extra screen's good. Of course, the question is how much airflow you get. The airflow in this instance being in the side, as you can see through the main glass. So potentially this combines both performance and aesthetics. Very smart. MSI has done well with their awards and we're signing off with MSI components at CES 2025 with a bunch of NVIDIA Blackwell products behind me. This is Kit Guru with MSI Components. Remember, we're on TikTok and it's kitguru.net on the web.